Hello, everybody. My name is Gonzalo. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, what we've been doing at HashMatter on um, some research and development on privacy-preserving peer-to-peer networks. There's no way I have enough time to talk about everything, so please uh, let's grab a beer afterwards and discuss about all the things uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bringing in today. So, all right, so the cool thing about decentralized applications and decentralized networks is that we can remove this huge entity in the middle of the interactions between different users, right? That's super cool. Uh, it brings us a lot of interesting, um, uh, brings a lot of interesting properties to the network and to the services. One of the, these properties that I'm interested the most is privacy, right? So one of the big problems nowadays is that basically these big entities know or potentially know everything I do, right? What are the websites I'm visiting? Uh, what's my social graph, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the really cool things that I'm super excited about decentralization is that we can remove this big entity from the picture. And what does that mean? Well, privacy for everyone, right? Super cool. Uh, unfortunately, it's not quite like that. So um, what I would really like to sort of focus today is, first of all, to show that unfortunately it's not the case, uh, but we can get there, right? And kind of linking these two things together based on what we've been working on. All right. So. Um, I would like to focus today on distributed hash tables. Uh, as if everyone know, I guess by this time, distributed hash tables are basically like the bread and butter of IPFS. So collaborative peer-to-peer -peer overlay network that allows peers in the network to resolve content, resolve store content uh, in a completely centralized way, no need for uh, um, any central authority, very scalable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's in a very high level, it provides every node in the network with the API to get a specific content ID and store a specific content ID. All right, so I think, I don't know how to play this, but maybe I can just uh, go ahead. I don't think I have, ah, oh, okay, cool. So the idea, this is just to show like very briefly, very high level, how actually, as we all know, the, the sort of a, a DHT um, routing and, um, uh, works so basically if I don't know who has a particular uh, ID or content ID I can actually ask to the peers which I know if they know someone which is closer to that ID so basically and do this recursively right uh, in a very high, very high level that's more or less how things work and um, what we actually sorry how do I take out of this oops what else Okay, can I do this? Okay, sorry. So yeah, the idea is that, uh, where is that? Where is, I thought it's just there. Okay, cool, thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so the idea is that this is basically a, like a collaborative uh, network, right? So basically, because we don't have anyone who knows where all the resources are, we have to rely on our uh, sort of friends, not friends, but other nodes in the network to resolve this content, right? So basically what's happening is that we are in this huge uh, place full of people and we are shouting at each other about what we want from the network, right? It doesn't even mean that, it might be so that um, the, what we are talking about is completely encrypted, uh, and by this means that I'm talking with someone else in a completely different language, but the people around me know that I'm talking with this person, right? And this is like metadata leakage uh, uh, that comes from these sort of uh, collaborative networks. And this is a big problem uh, when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer networks, right? Because uh, if, especially if we're talking about content addressable, um, uh, content addressable networks, what we have is that the fact that we're connecting or requesting for, to a particular, from a particular peer, it means that we're interested in this particular state. Anyways, so the, the idea is that, uh, or the, the big question here, how about privacy, right? Uh, the issues are very cool, very simple algorithms or protocols that work very well, uh, but uh, unfortunately, the same properties that make DHTs a great building blocks for the decentralized uh, or centralized web, it also makes them very vulnerable to um, privacy attacks, right? And there's a bunch of like, uh, there's a bunch of literature on this. This is no uh, science, rocket science. And the problem though is that if we want to build uh, sort of an application layer on top of uh, distributed hash tables or any other uh, peer to peer protocol, we actually are trickling or kind of bubbling up all these privacy uh, problems. So the applications on top of, um, uh, built, built on top of these protocols are actually going to have the same privacy vulnerabilities. Uh, so, one very quick example of this is that uh, if I'm 
sort of storing my own web page, uh, and I'm actually you as a, a sort of part of the DHT, part of the uh, IPFS network. You can actually try to find the provider of this particular web page, which is mine. And most likely, because I'm the only one who's actually storing and, and, and feeding my own web page, you're going to get me as a uh, provider, right? So the problem is that as I actually move around, you can check very likely what's my current IP and where I've been uh, going. So these, basically this um, graph, this plot, or this picture, it's the kind of thing that you can actually see from the Google, uh, sort of a Google Maps privacy uh, web page, right? But this actually can happen, or anyone in, in, in a uh, sort of decentralized network can actually have access of this information from anywhere in the network. So one of the main uh, ideas here is that uh, the problem is that, like, in centralized services, basically one entity gains a lot of information about what people are doing, and in naive decentralized networks, that same information is actually potentially uh, sort of resolvable by everyone in the network. And everyone might be your neighbor, might be your, like, ads company, government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is exactly the kind of problem we're trying to solve, and there's a bunch of other really cool attacks that we could talk about. Um, let's talk about that later on. So, all right, so about the solutions, right? And that's basically what we've been working on. Um, the first thing is to see privacy in a more granular way. Uh, so basically we wanna make sure that initiator, uh, a bunch of like, not just see privacy as something, wait a minute, okay. So yeah, there's a bunch of like different granularities of what privacy means in a decentralized network. We can talk about this later on. Um, and we also, obviously on top of this one, low latency, decentralization, we want scalability, et cetera, et cetera because we're uh, very spoiled in terms of like experience on connected services. So we all want uh, embedded in our uh, future of the internet and, and connected service. All right, so what we're doing now is that the hash matter is like trying to come up with this sort of a middle layer between the overlay network routing and the application layer, right? In which we can embed like protocols or primitives that will make it, make sure that we're not leaking any metadata on the application level when making, for example, DHT lookups, right? Or any other sort of a peer-to-peer -peer construction in the, in the bottom. Uh, and that's where there's a bunch of interesting protocols to do that. Uh, but what I really wanted to talk to you about is that there is a open source library which we are, we are trying to sort of take from research to uh, research work to uh, actually uh, software. Uh, and there's already a couple of very interesting protocols such as an in routing on top of uh, IPFS or uh, the DHT, using uh, DHT nodes as an in relayers, mixed networks as well, a bunch of uh, plausible deniability uh, protocols so that you can make your DHT lookups and people will really not sure, be sure whether it's you or someone else. So there's a bunch of interesting things to work on and there's definitely not time for a demo. Talk uh, to me about that later on. But yeah, that's basically what we're working on. So how to incentivize peers to create like privacy, privacy uh, work, and what are the protocols that we can add and help like uh, application developers to use so that it's as, like they can have their applications as private as possible for our decentralized applications. Thank you. I think I went so much far. Wait. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. I, I deserved. I deserved the hat. I deserved, thank you so much. Yes.